Hello there YouTube, Turan Han here and welcome to the 6th mission of the 100 years war uh, um, campaign in Age of Empires 4. It's titled 1429 Pate, so it's actually in the same year, probably right after Orleans. Orlean. Uh, the Battle of Pate is part of the Desperation uh, subgroup. Jean d'Arc's perseverance had paid off, with English in retreat, she could deliver the final, the fatal blow. And just like last time, there's two videos and, uh, and a, probably a page from history, yes. So without further ado, let's begin. Jeanne d'Arc had liberated Orléans and put the English army to flight. However, as the English retreated, they became an obstacle for Charles the Dauphin. He needed a clear path from Chinon to Reims, where he would be crowned king. Nearing the town of Pate, the English sought to regroup. But Jeanne d'Arc and her French army were closing in. So basically they needed to get through Pate, Pate to um, clear the path for the Dauphin to become king. Chased from the Loire Valley by Jeanne d'Arc's relentless pursuit, the remnants of England's forces fled for the safety of the north. At Pate, the French army could make sure they never made it. Okay. Looks like they're gonna have palings up. They show the long woman with palings, so uh, probably that's true. All right. Fleeing the Loire Valley, the English were on the run. As they retreated northwards, a French vanguard was in close pursuit. Caught out of position, the French faced a surprise attack from the English rearguard. Oh, wow. A detachment of English archers blocked the road with palings. An effective measure against cavalry. The French vanguard had to clear the road if they were to call in reinforcements. We'll just cross the ford and attack from behind. With the road cleared, the French army could safely bring in reinforcements from nearby allies. Um. The French army paid their ally and received a detachment of reinforcements. Okay, I got eight of better trees, twelve men at arms, tell archers. But we gotta liberate this town. Hearing the rallying cry of the English coming from the village of St. Sigmund, the French were alerted to the enemy position. Oh, 
fire in the infantry. Saint Sigmund. The French recaptured Saint Sigmund and prepared to rendezvous with Jean d'Arc. But a large English detachment had set up a blockade. So long as that force was in place, the French vanguard could not reach Jean. Um, I think I need... The French okay. army saw a chance to bolster their numbers and sent payment to their ally in return for reinforcements. Okay. So this looks like a fi uh, fixed force battle. Oh. Probably sort of the forest around there. They do have manganels, that's gonna be painful. Yes. Nice. With the English blockade destroyed, the French vanguard rejoiced at the arrival of Jean d'Arc and her troops. Over there. With their rear guard eliminated, the remaining English forces would now seek to escape the valley through the town of Pate. Three enemy regiments were converging on the town along three main roads. Um, I need more infantry. Jean had either to stop the regiments on the roads or race ahead to fortify Pate itself. <laughs> Come on, the man in 
Oh, this goes here. They might stay here or they might be actually on the move. If they're on the move, that's not good. Destroy this middle one and then attack this one. So it does update, it is moving. Sending gold to their ally, the French army received fresh reinforcements. Come on, get over there. Where are they coming from? Yeah, let's uh, get through here. Men at arms here. Come on, let's take care of them. Stop them here. Knights, get over here. Okay, this army took a hit, but it was worth it. Come on, get on, get it, get, get in here. Did we win? Without taking pate, oh, better be a ch uh, achievement. After an intense pursuit and a hard-fought battle, the French crushed the remaining English army, thwarting their desperate retreat. Now the triumphant Jeanne d'Arc could safely lead Charles de Reims for his coronation as King of France. 
Well, that was short and sweet. It could be building up if I take, take over Pate, but I don't, I don't think it's needed. At least not on this difficulty. Uh, anyways, let's see the outro. So this is the Battle of Pate. We've seen this. Had so let's see Patreon history. The Cathedral of Kings. If Charles the Dauphin was to become king of France, he must be cra uh, crowned at Rheims. Rem, Rheim. A uh, century earlier, Clovis, the first Frankish king, was baptized at Rheim with oil from a holy ampoule said to have been delivered uh, by the Holy Spirit. The Archbishop of Rheim still held that ampoule and with it the ability to sanctify the Dauphin as king. But Rheim stood deep in English held territory and Charles turned again to Jean d'Arc. Uh, she led him through enemy territory, freeing town after town. At Rheim, the people welcomed the pair. With his miraculous savior beside him, the Dauphin knelt at the cathedral's altar and rose as King Charles uh, VI Sevenths of France. With, and with that, his need for Jean came to an end. Let's see, medieval surgery. Ooh, I like this one. Medieval soldiers suffered brutal injuries in battle. Their chance of survival lay with barber surgeons. From cutting hair to removing limbs on the battlefield, the job of a barber surgeon was varied, and so were their tools. 600 years ago, surgery was very different from today, and this is some of the kit that the surgeons of then would be using. For example, amputations. This bit of kit was used to cut through the skin. Then you need to get through bone, and this is what they used. Believe it or not, this was used for neurosurgery. But what they didn't have at the time was anesthesia. Despite carrying out major surgery, barber surgeons had no formal training. What they learned, they learned on the job. And the place where they practiced the most was the battlefield. This was also a time when new surgical techniques were developed. Particularly when it came to saving the life of a future king. In 1403, 16-year-old Prince Henry was injured in the Battle of Shrewsbury while fighting rebels trying to overthrow his father, King Henry IV. The arrow penetrated his right cheek and became lodged at the base of his skull. He was very lucky it didn't kill him instantly. Prince Henry pulled the arrow from his face. The shaft came out, but the arrowhead remained lodged inside. They needed to get that out before infection set in and killed him. To the rescue, celebrated surgeon John Bradmore. Bradmore recorded what he did to save the prince's life, including a picture of the tool he made to extract the arrowhead. And it works by ensuring that the tip is closed and then inserting it along the track caused by the arrowhead until it meets the arrowhead. Then the screw is turned to expand the tip, locking it in place inside the arrowhead. And then ever so slowly and gently, you extract, making sure that you don't lose it along the way. I'm amazed by the skill that would have been needed to do this successfully. Can you imagine how good that felt when that came out? The young prince survived to become King Henry V, hero of Agincourt. Oh, snap. But perhaps the real heroes of medieval medicine were the barber surgeons, who saved countless lives on the battlefield. There's a really nice movie called El Medico uh, about one uh, English, I think, a uh, barber surgeon who's trying to learn more, and he goes all the way to Avicenna, Ibn Sina, in um, in what is uh, Persia, uh, right before the Seljuk invasions. Um, uh, just a minute. 
Uh, and what's interesting also is about medieval surgery, uh, the original Old English or Middle English word was chirurgeon. Uh, so, that, uh, so that's also interesting that, that, they, that they actually did have some deeper uh, surgery available to a chirurgeon that more usual barbers would not have. Um, and in nomadic societies um, uh, who dealt a lot with sheep and, uh, and, uh, and so on, um, every uh, the, uh, the knowledge of medicine or how to take arrows out and so on was, was more widespread than in a typical sedentary population. Anyways, uh, this was short and sweet. See you in the next uh, mission. Over and out.